Hi, I'm William Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. And I'm Lucas Shad, licensed architect in Livingston, Montana. Today, good architecture means proper dimensioning of a toilet. We often get asked by grafters the proper dimensioning of a toilet and how to lay a toilet out in a bathroom. Typically the distance from the sidewall to the center of the toilet that we use is 18 inches from the base of sheetrock. However, code minimum is 15, however we feel that's a little bit tight. Yeah, 15 is the minimum. Just make sure if you're drawing 15 from the framing. You take into account, uh, well, you do 15 and a half from the framing. That, right. would, that would be that as tight as you want to do, and that assumes a half inch sheetrock. Right. And so that would be from the side wall, from the back wall to the flange. And the typical thing that you got to know is where the flange is on your particular toilet model if you're getting really nuts and bolts, otherwise, generic blocks. It's nice to add the toilet flange in there on a non-printing construction layer so that you can see where it's going to be mounted. It's also very crucial once you get into laying out floor framing so that you can make sure your framing doesn't overlay on that flange and plumbers come in after the framers are done and have to mess with your framing. Um, and you have a lot more control over the overall design of your building that way and the smooth construction process. Remember, bathtubs are also or showers you can't move those grains like you can on a sink so make sure your framing just works out or plan accordingly by overlaying your plumbing accessories on your framing plan when you're laying out your framing plan yeah just to say that in a, in a different way and really to hammer that home that's absolutely right just make sure that when you're laying out your framing you put draw your framing and then draw your flange locations and your toilet your toilet flange locations and your shower drain locations and tub drain locations make sure they're shown on the framing plan so you can very clearly slide the framing around a little bit to miss those drains because you don't want to have a drain line up directly on top of a floor joist and then you have to box out around the floor joist it's a pain there's no need for it just do it right the first time lay it out properly Exactly. So the other dimension that we talk about is from the center line of the toilet to whatever is on the other side of the wall. Now that could be a bathtub or a sink or even another wall if it's in a small toilet stall. And code minimum is 15 inches on that side. Again, we like it to be a minimum of 18 inches, but it could go as large as 24 if you're in a toilet stall in like a master bathroom suite with a wall that comes down this side so that you have a little bit more room because 30 inches is too small for a master bathroom toilet stall 36 inches is almost too small we like to go 42 because it makes it a lot more comfortable in there. And that'd be 42 inches from framing to framing, so you'd end up with 41 inches if you did a half inch layer of sheetrock on each side. Exactly. And that should help you lay out toilets. And remember, always superimpose your plumbing on your framing plans when you're laying out your framing because it's crucial so that the plumbers never modify your framing or your framers never have to come back to modify the framing for the plumbers.
That is the proper dimensioning and layout of a toilet and what you need to keep in mind when you're putting them on your plans. I'm William Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. And I'm Lucas Shad, licensed architect, Livingston, Montana. Remember, always hire an architect and put box shells around every junction box in your home. Thanks. Thanks.